Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today we're going back to May of 1865. The Civil War is over in Washington, D.C. The Union armies are gathered for the historic Grand Review, the march that goes through Washington, D.C., where the for two days, the troops are marching. The Eastern Army and the Western Army are showing off their stuff. Around this time, the generals of those armies are posing in Matthew Brady's studio, something of a last portrait while they're all grouped together. And this image here is probably known to you students of the Civil War. You've got General Sherman and his staff. This particular image is an albumen print, a large-sized albumen print that is part of the collection of the National Portrait Gallery. And I've seen it in person. It is absolutely amazing. Literally in pristine condition, wonderful images of Sherman and his generals. The image is beautifully mounted on a piece of cardboard, and on that cardboard is listed Sherman and his generals, as the title implies. And if you look, you'll see that there are eight generals listed, which makes sense because those were Sherman and his seven subordinates. However, if you go back to look at the image, you will see there are not eight generals but there are seven. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the mount, the cardboard mount, and see who is missing. Well, the individual who's missing is Major General Francis P. Frank Blair, commanding the 17th Army Corps. He is not in the picture, and yet his name is clearly printed on this mount. And you got to wonder, well, why exactly is his name printed, but his likeness is not on the image? Well, now I'm going to explain to you the probable cause of why that is and how Matthew Brady's studio was able to repair it. So here is a carte de visite. For those of you who are students of photo history, you know that the carte de visite was this collectible paper print about the size of a modern baseball card. They were sold to the public, mass produced, and often stored in albums. So here's an example of that wonderful albumen showing Sherman and his generals, the seven generals, not the eight, as shown in the mount. This particular image is in the collection of Jerry Everts, who is a private collector and has one of the largest, if not the largest, private Sherman image collection in the country. So this image is pretty much a copy print of the one that you saw in the National Portrait Gallery print. Now, here's another image in Jerry's collection, and voila! If you look over to the far right, you will see there is an eighth general. That's Frank Blair, who has been restored to the image. So let's go back to the original albumen that I showed you in the National Portrait Gallery collection and compare that to Jerry's image showing Frank Blair over on the far right. The reason, the way that this happened to be, it wasn't, as you might think, that you had um, uh, the seven generals posing in Brady Studios and Frank showed up late. Well, that's not the case. Actually, Frank was never present. And what Brady Studio did is they were able to get a picture of Frank, and then using a double exposure technique, they were able to sort of graft it onto the original negative. At the time, or around the end of the war, this idea of using double exposure photography or trick photography was able for, was a, a way that the studios were able to create a whole new line of novelty images. 
they were able to take pictures of a soldier posed handing himself a letter or a soldier posed with himself in other situations. This was, as I mentioned, a novelty item, but it was also used here to be able to correct an error because Frank Blair wasn't able to make the photograph, so they were able to complete it by double exposure photography. In essence, it's the Photoshop of the 1860s. So there's a great example of how double exposure photography was used, not necessarily to trick somebody, but to try to create a documentary record that was complete where it was incomplete before. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research.